In applications of refraction, we are having another phenomenon which we call dispersion. Now in dispersion, this is the refractive index equation and we see from here that when the speed of a wave is dependent on the index of refraction and on the wavelength of incident light, this phenomenon is called dispersion. Or we can say that when different wavelengths will travel at different speeds in a medium, this phenomenon will be termed as dispersion. Now here, when the prism give us a split of colors, when the light ray will split into its constituents colors, seven colors, we call the spectrum or band of colors and the cause of it is dispersion of light. When white light enters here, it bends and in this material, the white light is having seven bands of colors, not seven wavelengths of colors, but seven bands because in each band we are having different wavelengths. So each wavelength will travel a different speed and the bending and this difference in the speed will cause splitting of the white light into its colors and we will have more bending for the blue color here than green, yellow and red. They are actually violet here, very small portion and then indigo and then blue, green, yellow and orange and red here. So we will have a spectrum of colors here. Let's consider this one. This is a blue light which will move faster in this medium compared to the red light which will be slightly slower than that. So we will have the blue color faster than the red one and this will cause all the intermediate colors here. If I consider the blue color here, starting wavelength is 400 nanometer, then it will experience the different refractive index of this prism and the red color, the starting wavelength of the red color will experience a different refractive index of it and due to that they will travel at different speeds here. And we are having this kind of phenomenon here that the white light splits into its individual colors or constituent colors in a band of colors. In nature, we also observe the splitting of color and we call it a rainbow. So rainbow is a combined effect of reflection, refraction and dispersion. It is unlike the prism. We can see it in more detail that when raining stops, then some of the rain particles or the water particles are there in the atmosphere. And when the sun will be just above the raindrop, then it will hit it. It will hit the upper part of it. And let's consider the very first ray, it will go perpendicular to it and it will come back exactly this line. Similarly, when a slanted ray will come in, then at this point it will cause some refraction. And when it will hit here, total internal reflection will occur at this point and it will reach here and another refraction will occur. So for a light ray, we are having two refractions and one internal reflection when the upper part of this raindrop is hit. Similarly, the third, the fourth and so on. They are, they are actually infinite number of rays but for our mathematical calculation or our understanding we are considering very few here. Now the very top one which is the sixth one here will actually cause here one refraction and it will strike here and totally internally reflect here and at this point it will cause a refraction and it will come here. So it will be like this one. 
that when it is the red color is on the top while the violet is at the bottom but due to another reflection from here it will cause an upside down and the violet color will come up and the red will come down and we call it a primary rainbow and the curvature of this is actually due to the curvature of this raindrop. So we will see a band of color which we call rainbow. Normally we see the primary rainbow because it is more intense and there is another rainbow which we call the secondary or auxiliary rainbow and the colors are being upside down here because it is another phenomenon which we will discuss here but first discuss this one when the light ray hits the upper part of this raindrop then it causes two refractions and one internal reflection and it causes the primary rainbow when the light ray will hit the lower half of this raindrop then it will cause two refractions and two internal reflections. See here, the light ray comes in here, it will refract at this point, and at this point it will cause total internal reflection. Then it will come here in another total internal reflection, and then it will come here and refraction will occur here, and we will see an upside down rainbow here, which we will call the reverse rainbow or which we will call the auxiliary or secondary rainbow here. Another thing that we are discussing in the applications of refraction is the compression of waves when they go into another material means when the light enters from a rare medium into a dense medium then compression of waves occur or the speed of wave is reduced and the waves are compressed and when they leave the material they follow exactly the same path and the same speed. Now why this compression of waves is occurring we will discuss this in another video the physical interpretation of this and this we are just following that when a wavelength is different in different materials this is because that v is equal to f lambda now we say that velocity is reduced in another medium then on this side either frequency will be reduced or lambda will be reduced or both will be reduced so we will have to see this thing that since f is the same in any material as it is in vacuum why the frequency remains the same because frequency is the number of cycles or per second of the wave so the waves arriving per unit time means to the boundary of the medium will be equal to the waves per unit time leaving the material so there will be no destruction of the waves at the interface and this says that the waves per second entering will be equal to the waves per second leaving so we will say that inside the frequency will also remains constant as well while it is the wavelength that changes so correspondingly when f is constant and v is reduced then it is actually lambda which is reduced and the compression only occurs in wavelength so when we will interpret this physically in another video we will understand this thing more another application of refraction is the brilliance of diamond we know that in diamond we see very beautiful colors in a shine. So the brilliance of diamond is partly due to its very high refractive index which is 2.4 to the highest in natural materials. And the diamond is cut artificially in such planes that 
the critical angle for it is very less and total internal reflection is occurring at many places here in this diamond which increase its brilliance and the third is the dispersion of light is giving the multicolor spectrum here so the diamond when we see different types of planes or colors here then it seems that it is inside the diamond but in reality it is not inside but these are the outer cuts of the planes here that seems to be inside now this is the industrial parameters or cutting parameters of diamond the diamond is cut in such planes according to these parameters that the total internal reflection is occurring at many places and its natural high refractive index makes its dispersion more and that's the reason of the brilliance of diamond so naturally the refractive index is playing the role while artificially it's cutting in different planes in these manners is actually adding up to the total internal reflection.